Hello again, Awesome Birds. This is Steve Simons and coming back to you for another episode. Uh, today's episode is a Book of the Week episode from awesomers.com. And uh, our episode today is episode number eight. So you can go to awesomers.com slash eight to see show notes and relevant details of, about today's episode. So I want to just give you a little context of the, the concept of the Book of the Week show. So my principle is I'm going to share some of the books that have been deeply meaningful to me and instrumental in my journey. And also uh, those who have recommended books around me, I may also you know, uh, include those as part of our uh, reviews. However, most of the time I will have read this book. Uh, from time to time we'll even bring on the authors of these books as well so we can talk about you know, the, the thinking behind the book and, and hear firsthand some of their philosophies on a live basis. So I'm, I'm anxious to see you guys' feedback about this, but I, I do believe that learning is a key part of being an entrepreneur. And I've talked uh, in the past about you know, how important uh, thought leaders and some of the brightest minds in our world think about learning. And that all, all the guys from Elon Musk and Warren Buffett and you know, Sheryl Sandberg and, and so many others talk about reading as a, as a critical part of of our kind of uh, evolution as entrepreneurs and as people. And this always goes back to that concept of equity. This is intellectual equity we're, we're spending. So without further ado, let, uh, without further ado let's ju- jump in here. So today's book of the week is one that I think has been very, very important in my journey. And I've recommended this book countless times. Countless times. I, I can't even count them. That's why I call it Countless. And, and in many regards, this book has uh, proven instrumental not only in my life, but some of the folks that I've re- referred it to, they've come back to me and said, gosh, you know, that, you know, the moment where you recommended this book and, and you know, basically let us know that we need to improve, that was uh, something important to us. And, and this has happened more than one time, kind of to my surprise. Uh, you know, I deserve no credit for it. All I'm saying is it was a good book for me, and I think it could be a good book for you. Now, uh, I, I like to pay particular attention to the, the little headline on the, the book that says why most small businesses don't work and what to do about it, right? And this is that concept of the e-myth, which was released back in the early 90s and then, um, as he says, revisited in the late 90s, and he sold millions of copies. This is one of the most foundation-setting books that I know of for entrepreneurs. And by the way, the E in the e-myth is that entrepreneurial myth. And, and fundamentally, the philosophy of the book is, um, you know, just because we think we're entrepreneurs or business, you know, owners and, and CEOs doesn't mean we are until we learn it. So we're going to dig into this book a little bit. Uh, but first, we're going to take a quick break. Okay, back again, everybody, and we're going to talk again in depth about this book, The E-Myth and The E-Myth Revisited. And, and one of the key quotes is uh, from the great Michael E. Gerber, where he says the following, If your business depends on you, you don't have a business. You have a job. And it's the worst job of the world because you're working for a lunatic. And man, oh man, when I first read this in the, the mid to late 90s, it, it definitely hit home because no question I'm a lunatic, but it really was a job. I, was, I had a business that I technically owned, but I was working seven days a week, uh, you know, day and night. I had multiple locations, and I was just running ragged, and there was nothing systemic about it. There was nothing about it that was, um, you know, something that was leverageable. It was just all guts of myself and an incredibly great team. They were great people, but they weren't being led well, and that the leadership was my responsibility. So, uh, not only did we have uh, this, uh, you know, business going and we were getting things done, and we were selling a couple million bucks a year at the time, but it was not profitable per se. I mean, we we made a little money, but it was a nightmare to run and operate. And I, I can't stress that enough. I was working seven days a week. At one point for two, two and a half years, I worked seven days every day for two, two and a half years. And that is not a good way to live. And uh, the, the business technically owned me. I did not own the business. And that was one, some of that messaging resonated in this book about you know, the fact that you know, just because you uh, own a business doesn't mean you are a business owner. You might just be a worker there because you're making some mistakes. So let's talk about some history here. It's a common statistic for us to know that 80% of all small businesses fail in the first five years. And the way this is measured is basically states go, well, five years ago, all of these companies uh, started in business, and now it's five years later, and they're 
80% are not continuing their registration. Now, other things happened along the way, right? Uh, some businesses were bought. Uh, some may have done some sort of reorganization in another state. But largely, I think it's accepted that most small businesses fail within the first five years. And it, it's precisely this phenomenon that Michael Gerber kind of uh, tries to explain and tries to help us get to the bottom of. And, and one of the things that I think is important for us to remember is that, you know, running a business and getting the technical work done are two different things, right? Delivering the, the product or service that you're offering in your business is not the same thing as running that business. But we confuse it so often. And, uh, and that's something that I think he does a good job of talking about and helping us kind of separate and understand those things. Uh, for, for my part, uh, one of the big takeaways is that, you know, Michael Gerber talks all about systems and that the more your company depends on the systems, then it's easier to kind of operate that business over time. So three kind of big takeaway lessons. Uh, one, if you want to help your business survive this adolescence phase of the business, right? And just think of business having a lifespan. There's, there's the, you know, the baby business, the adolescent business, and then it grows up to be a teenage rebellious business, and then a, you know, a, a business that's uh, spawning off other businesses and maybe someday has little grandbaby businesses. But during the adolescence phase, you, know, you need to make sure that you focus on systems. So uh, let's start with the foundational point. Again, having great technical skills doesn't mean you know how to run a business. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, second is to kind of imagine from day one that you make this thing a nationwide national franchise phenomena, and then you decide to build your first store with that kind of mindset in mind. So you're, you're, you're seeing that big picture, and then you're going to try to engineer the outcome. And then when you, when you build the business around systems instead of around people's personalities or their individual skill sets, it's much more scalable. Now, we'll talk later about the fact that systems and people are together critical. But, you know, if, if you have a particular person on your staff uh, and they're really good at, at, you know, hey, I can do both finance and I can do customer service, that's great. That person is probably wearing two different hats because you're never probably going to be able to hire somebody that is both a great accountant and great at customer service later. Right. So think of those as two separate positions instead of that individual person who's great. Uh, being the person who needs to be replaced if they ever leave the company. And so that, that's part of that system mindset. We're going to probably dive into that a little bit more as well. So let's, let's repeat this premise. Having great technical skills does not mean you know how to run a business. And uh, as always, I like to let some of these things just sink in for a second. Uh, we know for a fact that many of us running a business uh, today – you know, when we look in the mirror, we're like, I don't actually know what I'm doing. Uh, you know, if we're honest with ourselves, most of us who don't have experience actually managing or running a business, we, we have to learn it. And that's, that's a big gap in most people's understanding of business ownership. You can file the permits and you can open the business and you can even start producing revenue. But that doesn't give you leadership experience, management experience, uh, and the, the experience of being an owner and, and kind of the buck stops here uh, because owning a business can be a very lonely uh, situation. And that's, I, I think, talked about pretty well in this book as well. So, you know, the fact that, you know, 80% of businesses or four out of five small businesses don't make it past the five-year mark could be considered, uh, I don't know, depressing in many ways. But, you know, we have to ask ourselves, you know, what's, why is this happening? What, you know, what's the cause of it? And this is where the, the title of the book, The E-Myth, comes from, right? The, this great entrepreneurial myth. All I have to do is become an entrepreneur and my problems are solved. And, and because I'm a great carpet cleaner, because I'm a great you know, window cleaner, or because I'm a great janitor, or because I'm a great sa salesman, that doesn't make me a great runner of any of those businesses. And that's, that is such a, 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 I don't know, a paradox, right? We have these great skills. You know, maybe I'm the, the, the best painter on the planet, but that doesn't mean I know how to run a painting company without learning. And no matter what business type you're in, let's think about that and, and think about how we develop ourselves as leaders and as managers. So, you know, whether you're a great baker, you know, a, a great auto mechanic, a writer, that doesn't mean you are capable of running a business yet. So, right, we, th those are different things entirely, and we have to really give ourselves the chance 
to develop both sides of it. If you're already a good technician, you don't have to develop that much. But I will tell you this. It's a common trap that's talked about in the E-Myth that we're so anxious to show off our technical skills because we're so good at it that we will often find ourselves back fighting the fires day to day, working in the business, not on the business. And that's a big premise that Michael Gerber brings to this book. So, you know, once once you start a business, you don't want to be the one who's doing, you know, all of the technical work. And ideally in the future, probably not any of the technical work. You have to be, you know, the, developing yourself as a CEO, CFO, CTO, CMO, and all of the other, you know, normal functions that you might find in a business. These are critical tasks that have to be done from a leadership perspective. And that key role is always going to re- rely on you up front until you have time to to uh, hire for more of those positions. So, you know, if if you understand how to, you know, uh, be a great server or, or a great barista, that doesn't mean you should go open a coffee shop uh, or restaurant. It means, you know, maybe you first have to figure out how to do some of those technical details, like, you know, how to hire great people, how to retain the people. Uh, is there a way that you can put, you know, VAs into the mix and, and delegate some of these tasks to outside providers? Uh, how are you going to manage these people on a day-to-day basis? What's your vacation policy? There's so many important things when it comes to dealing with a, um, a business from a management perspective that we don't always take time to really understand. So the, the, the big picture concept is this idea that Michael Gerber calls the franchise prototype, right? Because he, he says all of this is solvable. Uh, every problem we've described thus far has a solution to it. Of course it does. My, one of my core philosophies is every problem does have a solution. I, in fact, I think is one of my axioms. And this, this underlying solution is that systems are what solve the problems, right? And McDonald's, which is the, the ultimate example of a franchise rollout, they have made it so easy that, you know, uh, let's say there's 20 people in a McDonald's. Most of them are high school kids, right? And you might have a, a leader or two uh, floating around in there. But really, people without skills, without extraordinary abilities are able to run that business, because the systems are clear, because the process and all of the things that have been set up are so clear. And this is why if you consider, you know, what if you had to sell this thing as a franchise, you're going to start systematizing everything from the beginning so that you can kind of ultimately take yourself out of the equation. And, you know, it's it's that concept of making the systems be responsible first and then the people for the systems second that will allow you to sustainably scale and grow your business. And so as you think about, you know, building, you know, this franchise concept, and even if you're in e-commerce, the same thing applies because maybe you want to have more than one brand or maybe you want to apply your, your cool system technique for other, their other customers. You have to figure out what are the functions in the business. You have to figure out, you know, what you need to do to uh, kind of, uh, deliver a positive customer experience and and source the product or service and and keep the people engaged and happy long term. Uh, you know how do you how are you going to do the training? How are you going to make sure that you know if somebody leaves the company that you can slot somebody back into that role? All of this is about the franchise prototype, which requires documentation at the end of the day. And I want to I want to be sure everybody understands that today it's easier than ever to put these systems and processes in place. When I started out, when reading this book, probably when it first came out in the late 90s, uh, mid 90s perhaps, everything was by hand. We were literally, you know, we'd write things down. We, we did have computers, yes, uh, for you young people, we did have computers in the 90s. But, you know, it was all just kind of writing it down and putting it in a Word documents. There were no online, you know, cool tools to help you, you know, uh, keep things like Process Street or uh, other things like that. You know, parsimony didn't exist. You know, today in part the parsimony ERP system, there are training programs you can put in there. There's documentation you can put in there. There's FAQs that, you know, every customer who submits a, a contact form, you can uh, answer that and then you can click the help and it just automatically builds an FAQ section so you can leverage kind of these customer interactions. So the power of technology to, to help build this franchise prototype concept is way way better than it has ever been before. So you're uh, this is the solid days of coming up to you know building systems. So uh, you know think about that franchise prototype 
And then when we come back, we're going to dive farther into this uh, great book, The E-Myth, right after this. Okay, gang, we're back here, and one of my favorite quotes from the book, uh, and I've I've repeated this over and over, and uh, I credit it regularly, but you know when I fail to, just know that it came from the E Myth, and that is the system runs the business, and the people run the systems, right? And and let's just kind of uh, let that marinate for a minute. When you when you have this concept that the system is what's driving the key metrics, right? That the system is. Uh, executing, the system is then measuring, and then the system is going to help you review those metrics. That's what runs the business. The people then look at those metrics and determine, is the system running correctly? And if so, and we still have failures, maybe we need to tweak the system, right? And this is really, really important that we don't want to rely on individuals, people's uh, awesomeness, so uh, the, another quote, which I've repeated often, and, and I think I even mentioned it earlier in this episode, is that the, uh, the principle of the e-myth is to have ordinary people produce extraordinary results. And the way they do that is they, they take the power of the system and they leverage that power. So if you have an individual who is extraordinary at Facebook marketing or copywriting or whatever the skill set is, that's great. And we want to you know, fully utilize that person's uh, skill and their savvy. And talent in people is never going to be replaced or eliminated. But if that person leaves, you can't have your whole business disappear, right? You can't fold up the tent and go home. So that's why you need to have the system that is built around so all of the people can have support and they can be empowered in their um, building of their own, you know, function and and delivering those uh, accountable metrics, often called strategic indicators in the E-Myth vernacular. And these are things that are, uh, that vary from job to job. So some examples of strategic indicators, maybe in sales, it's how many sales did I do this month? You know, the quantity and the the total gross dollar volume uh, or whatever your currency is. Uh, Maybe it's uh, the margin also for sales. Whereas the merchandising or product development teams, they're going to be probably on inventory turns. Uh, They're probably going to be on margin, uh, also probably on some sort of dollars. Uh, The the marketing team is probably going to be on conversion rates. Uh, They may be on, you know, add to sales ratio, return on ad spend, uh, those types of things. So the key indicators in each function helps you measure the business. And this is a big part of the E-myth. Now, what this means is when you have systems, you can go through and you can make changes to the individual systems in a particular function without it breaking every other part of the business. This is a modular concept. And having these different modules is an important thing, right? So if you change something in finance, it shouldn't break what's happening in marketing or logistics or whatever else. And there are generally, according to the EMA, three kinds of systems that will help you know put your business together. There's the, the hard systems. And think of this as something as simple as the alarm system in your building or the coffee machine or, you know, Seller Central if you're an Amazon seller. These are, these are hard systems because they, they are just part of, you know, the ecosystems. Um, and, and they're inanimate in, in many ways. Now, there are soft systems that would be things like um, the ideas and you know, the, the concepts, you know, at, at, at your office, you might have a policy that says, hey, every Friday we're going to do a free lunch. Um, so the soft systems are going to be things that, you know, kind of help the culture. And then there's, of course, the, the information systems. This is going to be um, any of your training manuals, any of your online uh, training, the data. Uh, and this is where the key indicators will come out, where you start to figure out, you know, what are my sales? What is my margin? What is the uh, performance of my business overall? So think about those different systems types. Okay, so we've talked about you know the three different systems, the hard systems, soft systems, and information systems that have been reflected in the E-Myth uh, Revisited, the, our book of the week. Uh, but the important takeaway, perhaps, is the idea that you know your job ultimately is to make sure that the systems run together, to develop the systems, to develop people who can also develop and tweak those systems on an ongoing basis. I definitely am not talented enough or um, perhaps I'm too lazy, but I'm not going to write all the systems myself, right? 
I want to be able to provide the systems mentality and the support and infrastructure and tools so that my team can build the systems so they can build the systems because ultimately you know when we talk about people leaving positions it's not just that they quit or they were fired they may need to move on to other more important jobs within the organization and that allows us to bring in new junior people and then promote our people which is good for the company culture that's why systems are important, right? This is not about, you know, we, we, we lack retention or we're bad managers so we have to fire people. We made a bad hire and then we got to resolve that. This is about giving opportunity to our people. And, and that's a big, important part of this process. So uh, we've talked in, in, uh, a little bit about this in the opening, about this business life cycle, right? The, the, the human grows. We understand, you know, you got the baby and they're crawling around and the toddler's starting to walk around and get his legs under him. And then, you know, kind of the adolescent is, you know, kind of uh, starting to do things and learning elementary school type things. And then you're into the rebellious teen years and, and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, think about your business in that same concept because it really does go through that same kind of life cycle. And the e-myth is certainly going to talk you through that concept. And so you have to think about, you know, especially if you haven't started an entrepreneurial endeavor yet, what do these questions look like ahead of time? And this book is really good to, to drive you to try to figure these things out ahead of time. If you're already in the midst of it, like I was when you read the business, it can be a little bit daunting and even depressing to go, oh, my gosh, this is so much work. How am I going to get systems for all these, you know, different departments and all these different roles? And uh, it's it's just difficult. And so it's I don't want it to be overwhelming for you. I think the first thing is to kind of understand that systems are the key and then have a process for starting to build those systems over time. And I heard a quote. I don't remember where it came from. Uh, forgive me if this was your quote. But basically people are like, yeah, but I need it all now, right? It doesn't matter what your goal is, whether it's getting all your systems done or you want to lose some weight or whatever it is, but I want it now. And somebody just said one time, you know what? The time's going to pass either way, right, if you're lucky. The time's going to pass either way, so just relax and just make it something that is sustainable and feasible to get done. Don't overwhelm yourself. Don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you do have and then what you can build. So uh, Michael Gerber calls something called the turnkey revolution, which he claims has a 75% success rate. And this idea is that turnkey franchise prototype where you know a, a business owner – can turn the business over to managers and, and staff and team to run that business without requiring them day to day. And that is the critical transition point between working on your business from that high level to working in your business and, and going through the, the doing it, doing it, doing it, day in, day out grind. And all of us have had that day in, day out grind. And this is why we talk about the different roles for you as the, as the owner or CEO you have different roles, right? One of them is your manager, right, where you're looking after people. One of them is your technician, where you know the skills that need to be deployed to solve a particular problem. And then one of, uh, of course, is you as the owner or entrepreneur. And when we start out, we're splitting our time between those three, you know, the, the owner, the manager, and the, the technician. But mostly the technician is getting the time, right, because we got to get some stuff sold. we got to get things done. Over time, you need to move from the technician into management and from management into ownership as you can build layers of people to take on those responsibilities. And this is why over time, an organizational chart is a critical part of the, the equation, even if you hate them like I do. Making first an, a functional organizational chart, and I'll share one of those in a future Awesomers episode, is the first step. And then making a position org chart is kind of the second step so that you can really understand how – the business flows from top to bottom. It's really, really an important thing. And at the end of the day, if your business doesn't serve the, the needs of the customer, then you're going to be fired anyway by those customers. So there's, there's no point in uh, wor worrying about a long-term business because you didn't focus on you know, getting happy customers. And uh, so fundamentally, uh, understanding those different business roles and then migrating from that heavily technician mindset into management, and then ultimately into the ownership is very, very important. So finally, I want to share um, you know, what kind of my summary is and what my biggest takeaways. One of the things I love about the E-Myth is that he shares a common vocabulary that we can use. This vocabulary about systems and about process and about you know, franchise prototype and so forth, 
All of the things inside there give you and I a vocabulary we can share. And you will get a lot more out of Awesomer's episodes if you read this book. But more importantly, you will change your business. You will change your mindset if you really adopt that systems mentality. And there will be many, many more episodes in our future where we talk about you know, the philosophical piece of this, where we talk about the systems piece, the technician side, the management side, all of these different things. But having that baseline of vocabulary is a great start. Now, the, the second piece of that is the philosophical baseline, right? So I like to be able to share the, the philosophy that I have, again, strategy, systems, and scale. And there, it's, it's a linear process. If you have a crappy strategy, the other two won't matter. Uh, if you get strategy right, the other two then become critical, right? Because you want to hit, you know, systems, and then you hit scale, and that philosophy helps us all kind of have a, again a basic understanding and a general baseline of understanding and philosophical kind of alignment, so that when we talk about these things in Osmer's episodes and um, you know in our daily lives even that there's a common understanding. And I really think that this book has been something that has been a very, very important book to me. I uh, applaud Michael Gerber for, you know, writing this original book. Now I I have to say, I've uh, read some of his other books that uh, are more like lead magnets for their training programs and things like that. Uh, It's a little, um, not quite as good for me. And I also want to say as much as I love this book, I always give people kind of the same general disclaimer. Uh, the way the book is written has um, some soft edges to it. Uh, when I first started explaining, I'm like, you know, hey, make sure that you focus on the core messages in this book, and you can kind of skip the hippie talk. And it, it's, <laughs> I know that may be a, a stupid way to say it, but you know, some of the soft edges I didn't have a lot of time or empathy for at that moment, and and probably some of those lessons are valuable. But even if you find some of those soft edges things that you don't resonate with. I want to extol to you the virtues of the core takeaways, working on your business, not in it, you know, building something that is long term and sustainable through systems. I highly believe it. And I think this book is really, really pivotal in my own understanding of it. And then how I began my journey to really get, you know, systems in every possible thing I could do. And although we're not perfect at it, I would uh, I would guess that we're probably, you know, highly systems focused uh, proportionally much higher than the average uh, company and the average, certainly the average startup. But, uh, you know, systems really do run our business. So I, I hope this was instructive for you guys. This is, a, a again, a kind of a book of the week uh, review for the E-Myth written by Michael E. Gerber. Uh, I really do recommend this book. I hope you get out there and check it out. And in the show notes, we'll have links to the book and maybe even some other takeaways or stories that, that we may be able to share with you. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, Osmers.com slash eight is where you can go to find the show notes and the details. Uh, I really do enjoy this book. It's something that I believe in, and it's it's certainly something that I hope you guys take the time to read. It's for sure something that really made a mark on me in my career and my systems building, and I think it's worth your time to investigate it right now. We will be right back after this. <laughs> 